All right, now we're going to uh, do a little demonstration on putting together the LEGO ro rotary um, engine. So to start off with, what we're going to have to do is put some of these friction axle pins in each one of these and each one of these. Hopefully I stay on camera. It's always an issue. So as you can see, uh, there's a lot of them to do, so I'm going to do this offline, but you can see that's that's basically what we're going after. So I'll be right back. Right, as you can see, those are all assembled. Um, the next thing is we need to assemble these. Oh, excuse me. And what we're going to do is we're going to put an axle in one side, and we're going to do this to all four sides. So There's two of them, so we're going to do them for each side on both of them. Put an axle in, just a two, and then we're going to put a half bushing on. So I'm going to go offline and I'm going to put that in all of them as well. Alright, welcome back. And so this right here is basically what the end product should look like. You've got two number two axles in each side with a half bushing. So these are spacers. And the next thing we're going to talk, I want to talk about is uh, the pistons. Now the object of the um, rotary engine is to get all four pistons on one pin. So the pistons are built to put two on a pin, but they're not built to, to put four on. So to do that I actually had to make some modifications. Look at that really quick. This right here is a regular connector, uh, crank, uh, piston connector, connecting rod, that's what they're called. Alright, now you see that there's a fat lip and there's a skinny lip. So what I did was, on two of the pistons, I removed the skinny lip, so there's just the fat lip, and then on another two, I removed the fat lip, so there's just the skinny. And that will allow us to now put all four on one uh, crankshaft. Now, of course, there's no, there's no going back, so basically uh, you got to use those for a rotational or rational um, Anyways, I'm going to cut that out. So let's put that all on our crankshaft. So we'll put that up. Make sure this is facing upward, right here. And then we're going to put another one facing upward. And then we got to use the skinny. We just used the thick one. Now we're going to do another skinny, but have it facing downward. And then finally, we have the last fat one facing downward. And as you see, we've made an X, and we've got our all right, my camera battery died, but we're back. So all I was saying was that now we've got all four pistons on one rod, or it's just a size one length axle. And now we can make our rotational or our uh, rotary engine. So we can't hook these the normal way. We have to use uh, these as our our braces. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna alternate. Just put them on flat and alternate thin and thick every other one. We'll just put three on for now because we'll use the... yeah, you'll see. So now we're gonna also, we're gonna alternate on this side as well. So I did a thick one with the hole in the center. I'm gonna put a thin one on this side. Yeah, there we go. I'm just actually gonna leave that center one off for now. You'll see why in a second. Okay, so now we can wrap this around. We want to put our engine inside it. So let's just insert it. Yeah, it likes to come out, as you'll see, but yeah, it'll work out. Let's keep on trying. And there we go. We've fully enclosed um, the pistons or the crankshaft. Let's try and get this a little squared up. It'll just make life easier. So these are our main supports. They're going to force this to be in a good, like, perfect square shape that can't bend, because right now it's pretty flexible. We don't want that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put... That's what we have, we have, why we have these ones with the holes, is so we can put these inside the holes, and that'll hold that in place, and it'll also give us a center axle to anchor our uh, crankshaft to. So obviously there isn't one. I did forgot one piece. Uh, we needed a three size three axle. So let's put that in and let's connect it 
to our crankshaft. So now our crankshaft is connected to the axle. And let's close to finish up this loop by getting a thin one and locking it into place. Okay, let's try and readjust this to get it all nice and even. Already you can, you can see how this is all going to work. Um, as that spins, you can see that it's going to push all four pistons around and in an airplane or something like, you know, like that, that's what would happen is you'd have all a radial kind of explosion or combustion driving the central shaft which would drive the propeller. So to add this last one, it's a little tricky. We have to do it uh, simultaneously because it is a pretty tight fit. So let's put them on and line it up and we'll pinch it on the ends to hold it in place and we're going to get that uh, crankshaft axle to go into the hole and just start um, the pins. Don't push one side down all the way. That way you can get the other side started before you go. There you go. Now once both sides are just sort of started, you can just push it in. And what you've got now is we have up and down on this side this support and left to right or horizontal on the other side and that's what forces it to stay a nice square. As you can see, we get some good spin. Let's put a propeller on it. There we go. And straighten that out. Got a nice propeller motion. We've got pistons all around pumping, so it would make a really nice realistic uh, airplane model. Alright, thanks for watching. There it is.